computer. Okay, so tonight we're going to play some uh, Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. It's a big book. Um, this is kind of part two of the House in the Frozen Lands, which is a module from Dragon Magazine from about 1986, I believe. Um, in the first session, the party was sent to deliver a message to essentially a, a monastery or training uh, area uh, that uh, some clerics of, of Apollo train uh, both rich or, or noble uh, children and also clerics. Um, but when they arrived upon the, the place to, uh, to bring notice, um, they found it had been uh, overtaken by um, some evil force. Uh, luckily, uh, someone in the party um, was smart enough to send back, I believe a shaman, I was smart enough to send back a notice to the uh, to the Chimerian lord, the warlord that had sent them there, and say there was something up. Um, his daughter is currently uh, at this school there, and when he got that message and nothing else, uh, fearing the worst, he has assembled um, a couple of uh, powerful adventurers that happen to be, you know, had, you've, you guys have some kind of uh, relationship with him. You've done something for him in the past, or he's something something for you. You're there. Um, you find this has happened. Maybe you've even, even met this daughter at some point. Uh, Dole is her name. Um, and he is going to uh, ask you to go to this place and rescue her. He's also sending um, 60 men uh, with dog sleds and weapons and everything to make siege to, to remove the evil force. Um, but he's fearful that, uh, you know, something might happen to his daughter before then. So you guys are being sent somewhat clandestinely. Um, and it takes about two or three days to get there uh, normally, you know, with this dog sleds and everything. So you're going to be transported uh, via magic. Um, so go ahead and introduce your characters and then we'll, we'll play out that, that scene. So let me go here to Crystal. Go ahead and introduce your character. Um, <clears throat> uh, you see a redheaded uh, woman. Um, she is... Uh, quite uh, thin. Uh, you could probably tell even under the clothes that she's uh, wearing to keep herself warm. Uh, you know, they probably just kind of uh, droop on her a, a little bit. <clears throat> um, she's, uh, she's, uh, she's been hired by this uh, warlord. Um, uh, she's done a few jobs for him before uh, in the past, recovering um, bounties and such. Well, she didn't work with him, but uh, basically the uh, she worked for some of the uh, the guards in the city and stuff, recovering bounties for them. And they, uh, you know, kind of kicked up to the leader, like, hey, we know this scout, and you're trying to, you know, get people you can trust. So that's how uh, she's managed to get in on this, on this job, uh, to get into this place and hopefully recover um, this girl. Um, uh, and, you know, get paid. I uh, and I'm um, playing, uh, Ptolemaeus Fagina Adoros. Uh, Ptolemaea, uh, it's her first name. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, and, uh, Tony, go ahead and introduce your character. Standing there is this, uh, large Celt man that has this very thick flowing red beard it falls down almost chest level in places. Um, his face is youthful when he shows it, uh, but going into battle or going into some situation, he wears this skull over his face to cover his face and uh, the look on his face. But you see a, a battle axe that is strapped across the back and you see a bastard sword at his side and a hand axe, a large hand axe. As he's standing there, you notice his studded leather armor in place, the studs themselves are, are an appearance of these small skulls. Each of them is, is a studded piece of, of metal that is in form of a skull itself. And he's wearing all these heavy clothing knowing they're going into a very cold atmosphere. Uh, he knows his specialty of what he does to deal with the effects of fire, whether it's normal fires or magical fires. 
uh, but that is part of his heritage, but he means that most of his heritage comes from the use of the axe and the sword. And he looks towards uh, the female, but is going to lead the way, knowing her specialty is to scout out ahead and make the proper path. And he looks over towards her and he goes, if we don't come back, you will go down fighting to your last breath. There will be no retreat from this. I am playing Ethrarg, the warlock who specializes in pyromancy. Excellent. Okay, so you guys... Go ahead, Chris. You want to say something? Uh, yeah, she was, you would just reply, um, you know, that is how many of my jobs have been. I do not fear dying on this mission. So as you guys are having, that is what Sorry. As you guys are having this conversation in this tent, you know, and there's a fire in there, and uh, the, the warlord, again, you, you know and you've met um, Nolar. He, he comes in and, and he says, uh, <clears throat> all right, it's, it's, it's ready for you. Um, my magician has prepared a means for you to get there. Uh, the, the night is falling. In a few hours, you should be there by dark. Please return my daughter and anything that I can do for you will be done. Land, horses. Warriors, they'll all be yours. Um, and he kind of opens up, he kind of walks up the flap, and as he walks out, you know, like his, his men and arms open him up, you know, they open it up for us, he's the warlord, and you walk out, and you can see that there's kind of like, there's a wagon there on the ground, um, uh, but it looks like the wheels have been taken off of it, and they've added like a, this kind of, this wooden brace on top of it, almost like you'd see over, over a well. Um, and standing next to it is this kind of, uh, me kind of youthful, but uh, you know, uh, very muscular uh, warrior. Um, and he, he is stripped down, even though it's cold here, he's stripped down to just like a loincloth. Um, and, he, and he just, he's standing there. Um, and from one of the other tents comes this, this very, very old man. You probably have seen him around. Um, he's the, 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 the wizard who is a magician that's uh, helped this, this, uh, this Chimerian warlord, you know, uh, maintain peace for so many years. Um, and uh, nobody knows how old this guy is. He's probably the oldest person you've ever seen. Um, you could probably kill him with uh, throwing a rock at him, but uh, it's, uh, it's known that he has uh, much, uh, much uh, magic in his blood. So he, he, he kind of comes up with a cane uh, and he walks to this young warrior that's there and he pulls from from the from his uh under his robe like a small knife and he, he actually starts to carve these like runes into the uh the man's chest you know you can see him bleeding as this this is uh this is being done and then he steps back and suddenly the the man falls to the ground and you see his body start to shiver and shake and and, and the, by the time the wizard walks some 10 feet away the man is transformed into a huge some 30 foot wingspan eagle uh, and he takes off into the sky, and the the warlord says, "The bird will take you. Enter the uh, the wagon, and you'll be transported." Um, how far down is the wagon? It's like twenty feet away from you. I mean, it's like it's right there. Oh, I thought we were up in a building somewhere. No, you just came out of a tent. Oh, okay, all right, my bad. Okay. No, the Canarian village. It's all tents and stuff. It's not. Uh, they're nomadic. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. She'll walk over there to the uh, thing then. Yeah. I mean, you can see that like it's been sit, it's been fitted with a place. Yeah, it's a wagon, so you can sit down in it, and uh, and there's some you see some heavy uh, furs and stuff in there because you're going to be you know just sitting still in the cold weather um, to stay warm, and you see some food and, and, and such sitting in there as well. Um, and once you're once you're in, uh, the bird you know the 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 wizard raises his hand, uh, and the bird swoops down and grabs that that piece that's over the top of it, the you know the the, the wooden piece apart, and it lifts the the entire thing in the air and starts to propel you to the north. Um, as you're flying, uh, kind of up into the into the sky, it's cold. Or you, you've seen a view you've probably never been so high in your life. Uh, you know, certainly not flying. Um, and it's it's pretty amazing, um, probably to you, but at the same time, you're seasoned warriors, so you know you've dealt with with these kind of things. Um, and it doesn't take that long. I mean, uh, it, it takes about I had to keep, I literally googled how long eagle how fast eagles fly. Uh, it takes about three hours to transport. Would have would have taken almost three days for you to get there. 
Um, and as you're, as you're, as you're flying with this, uh, with this bird, I don't know if there's anything you want to do in preparation, but essentially you can see, oh, sure, let me show you the map here. If I can do it, see how well I prepped. Let's see if I go like this. Okay, so this is basically the, you probably remember this from last time. You guys, you started down, down here uh, in, the, in the lower corner right above my, my picture. Um, of course, the bird makes a straight flight right over those mountains. You're going to end up over here um, in the upper right-hand corner. Essentially, at the very northern part of this, uh, this school area, um, it's in a valley. <clears throat> you notice that, uh, that the northern part is completely uh, blocked by a sheer cliff. But to the south over at the southern part, you can see these like hills. Um, the bird is, is going to, you can, you're going to drop, you can kind of tell because you're in the air and you can see as the sun's setting. It's gonna drop you probably like three or four miles away south in the in the hills, um, so you could make your way to the uh, to the location. Obviously, a giant bird flying through the sky is gonna be obvious. Um, you were told that uh, <clears throat> the previous crew came in kind of just directly from the front, and the and the place is well fortified and guarded. So uh, you know you'll need to be a little bit more discreet probably um, because it, 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 there's you know that they, they wiped out four mighty warriors, whoever, whatever's there. So you need to uh, you be cautious, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, and as you're kind of dropped, well, land, you know, the bird put you down, um, <clears throat> you know, again, a few miles away, you were told uh, as you, by the chieftain, kind of as all, all this was getting ready, you were leaving, that uh, the bird would, would sit and wait until the morning and then would, would fly back with you and, um, you know, his daughter and any, you know, he says if you can rescue any of the other children or innocents, obviously that would be best too. But I mean, in the end, he's really sending you there for his daughter. So whatever you can do, you know, is, is what you can do. So as noted, you're dropped kind of to the south, about three miles up. Um, you've got whatever you've got on you. Um, and it's the, the night has fallen. So it's dark now. And uh, what do you want to do? What do we know about? Approximately how, how much of darkness we have left? How many hours, roughly? Yeah, it's it's the winter, so the nights are long. So it's probably like uh, you probably have somewhere around 12 hours uh, before before the sun comes up, you know, being that it just set. You know, so you probably have, let's say, 11 hours because it's night now. So, yeah. Uh, and moving through the hills at night, it, it, the three miles is probably going to take you maybe an hour if you, you know, go at a cautious pace, which is probably what you should do. Um you know, since you don't know what's around. Which hill were we dropped off on? You're dropped off kind of in this general. I mean, this is like one hex here is 18 miles. So you're, you're kind of here. Well, you can't see my mouse, but um, I'll try to blow it up to where you are. Can I do it? I guess it's not going to let me do it. Basically, you see where the words are there? Up at the top in the right-hand corner? Yeah. Yeah, you're basically just south of that. You see that little, like, fuzzy thing below it? You're there. That's hills. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can tell they're hills. I was just wondering which hill we were dropped off yeah, on. Yeah, those hills. I mean, are where you were. Not the ones. So, there. like the north, the north, uh, east one? Yeah, exactly. And there are some, you know, there's like some, some streams and stuff throwing through the, flowing through the hills. And you know that you would have been told if you had asked these questions or whatever, or maybe it's just common sense for a scout that, uh, you know, the valley that it's in, the, the rivers run into it. So you know that like the, if you follow any of the streams or if you just go north, I mean, you're not going to have a hard time finding where you're going, especially not as a scout. Okay. Okay. Um, then uh, she would um, offer to run ahead about, uh, let's call it, like, I mean, uh, however far like uh, Aetherog feels that he could close in melee pretty well. So like 30 feet maybe. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, she, uh, she can signal to them to like, you know, uh, or make, or like make animal sounds, uh, to let them know like the coast is clear. Uh, like if she needs to hide or whatever, like, I guess she needs, she would like to move silently. So. Uh, but I don't think move silently actually makes me hide. It just makes me live quiet, right? Yeah, so I mean, if you just move along cautiously, um, you know, that that's fine. I mean, you don't have to roll anything for that. You know, you're out in the woods, you can move cautiously. If you hear something and you need to, like, sneak up on it, then you would need to make a roll for silence. But just generally speaking, you can just move quietly. It's, 
I mean, you're walking through the snow, so it's not completely quiet, and you're kind of out in the wilderness. So, no matter what you do, you're cut. You probably have snowshoes. Even you're, you're probably making like crunchy sounds, but you know you can move relatively quietly. Okay? Mm-hmm. Bad. Okay. Of course, anything. The benefit is that anything else moving, you're going to hear as well, because it's it's again you're out. You've been out in the a large expanse. Is it like is it currently snowing, or like as the so- snow all settled? And because um, like if it's currently snowing, it would actually be a lot more quiet because it's fresh snow. Like when it like when it freshly snows, like it gets super super quiet. But like if the snow has settled, then it's crunchy and stuff. Like you were saying. Yeah, I mean the the fresh snow is is as you know as you know is quiet. But there's there is snow on the ground that's been here for been frozen. Okay, um, okay. It's always snowing here. I mean, like it's snowing a little bit. So yeah, you have that that kind of. Uh, you know, softness of the fresh snow, but you definitely still hear crunching, you know. All right. Uh, is your movement uh, 40 on your character, Tony? I have no idea. Huh. Yeah, you have studded leather or this you? He's yeah. wearing studded leather. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so she'll offer to run like 40 feet ahead and like she's going to move silently um, and, you know, if she hears anything or whatever, she'll like she'll signal to him to like let him, like she'll she'll tell her, him her and her certain like, uh, signals and then like also if she eats the hide she's going to tell them like the kind of animal sounds she likes to make and stuff for like different you know situations he would look at you and he would go whatever animal sounds you use you need to make sure that they are from this area because if someone hears a sound of an animal that is not native to this area they will know that it's not the animal you were trying to make. Of course, of course. Yeah, like I'll make a songbird if the coast is clear and I'll make like a snow fox if the, you know, if there's danger or something. Yes. Okay. And so, yeah, she'll she'll quickly like, like, like they can work them out have, together or whatever. Yeah, you have three hours of flight to get there, so you could have worked out all this. I, yeah, I'm not going to work much with that. Okay. Uh, you can, uh, you're traveling, so go ahead so, and both sides of that. I, I, I have a question uh, yep. real quick. Uh, before, like, as the eagle is kind of, like, coming down, yep. um, like, when we're about 100 feet from the ground, uh, could my character jump out ahead of time to scout the ground below and make sure it's safe for the eagle to land? Because I can slow fall for 110 feet. Or... Yeah, something like that. Between your walls for that? Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. 70 feet. <laughs> um, I don't think so. If I do, you then I'll... about 70 feet in the, above in the air? Uh, yeah, because I can control my fall. I think I can... I don't think I have to be near a thing. To retard descent uh, or of a uh, perceptive drop for every level of experience the scout if unencumbered can fall 10 feet and sustain no damage so oh so long as a wall or other surface nearby oh never mind yeah it's okay like not one. gonna do that then yeah you're like basically like so you don't fall uh yeah if you just leap out then you're gonna take damage but also yeah, you know, again this is like a tundra it's, it's hilly but it's a tundra area and you're flying in the, in the, in the sky so like when you're you know 100 feet up you can see probably for like, you could actually probably see the school, you know, almost from where you're at. I mean, there, you, there's nothing on the ground. You would see it for sure. There's nothing out there. Okay. So yeah, you definitely can be paying attention. So you don't, you don't need to do that. Um, you know, to do I that. just want to, I honestly just wanted to do something cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could do that if you went the other way off the cliff, but, but the cliff was 200 feet. So you'd probably die. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It's okay. You could do something cool. We're just started. <laughs> no fear. Never fear. There'll be time for cool. Okay. So, um, Go ahead and roll a twelve-sided die to see if you encounter anything. Um, me? Yeah, you might as well roll. It's a joke. Uh, ten. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it takes you know, like because you're going slow and you're trying to be quiet and whatever. And it's about three miles. I'll say it takes you roughly an hour or so. Um, by the time you get to the um, the place where you can see this, this the school, um, you're more or less the moon is up a bit, so you can it's it's much brighter, so you can see further in front of you. Um, and you did not encounter anything uh, along the way. Let me see if I did this map right so I can pop the picture. Up. Let's see if we can do this. I'm trying to be good like this, but I, I'm sure I'm going to screw it up. Let's back. Nope, there it is. Okay. I mean, obviously, there's not people standing there, but um, that's more or less what you see. You got this. Um, 
well, you're these people, I guess. You get, you have this uh, school out in front of you. Um, there's the sheer cliff kind of behind it, if you will, from where you're standing. You may be not quite this close. And you can see it, it looks just like that. So off to the left side where the guy's cape is kind of blocking it. That's the little tower with the wall that uh, would have been blocking if you came in from the front. Then you've got the main body of the school, which has like a, a kind of a tower in the center of it. Um, you can see there's like an overhanging uh, area uh, to the uh, to the what will be the, the the right side of there. You know, and underneath there, you can see there's actually some statues or whatever. You can't see that well from where you're at, but uh, that's more or less what it looks like. So that's that's actually the uh, the picture. But I have an actual map, so I'll show you the map. Let's see. Ta da! Yeah, oh, wow, look at this. Get this all good. All right, so um, this is the actual uh, map. So, like I said, this is that wall that, that you would have saw on, on the other side. Um, there is like a stream blocking you, but it's not so you can just jump right over it, probably. Um, and then this is the tower. Oh, you can't, um, you can't see my mouse, obviously. In the center, you see it says tower, school, and then that overhang. So, that's basically what you're looking at. Um, and you're probably like, I don't know, 150 yards away from it. I mean, you're far enough away that you can see it easily, but that you're not so close that you need to worry too much about, uh, <clears throat> you know, talking quietly or anything like that. Is there uh, smoke coming from the uh, tower? Like, does it look like someone might be up there? Um, from the tower, no. However, um, let's take a quick look here. But there is a, like a chimney that I, I'm, I can't bring the picture back um, on the far right hand side. So where it says overhang, like on that part of the building, there is a, 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 some chimneys there and you can see some smoke coming out from there. And from looking okay. at this side, we wouldn't be able to see the large front gate on this side, would we? Uh, you can't really see the gate. I mean, you can see like, you can see like the edge of it. Yeah. Like you can see that much of it. Yeah. You know, you can see the the uh, the bridge. You can see kind of the part, the gate. This wall, by the way, the 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 where it says gate and wall. The wall is about five foot thick. Um, you don't see anybody patrolling on it right now, but there is a tower there as well. I mean, you can basically see everything that's in the picture. You know, you can if you take your time to just kind of sp spend a minute to walk up and down where you are and stay low. You can see all that. You don't see anybody outside though. It is the middle of the night and it is very cold. Um, and. Uh, yeah, the only smoke you see is from there. Um, yeah, that'd be the only place you see smoke from. Um, it looked like in the picture that the like south side of the building doesn't have any windows. So, like, um, uh, so uh, Tamala, uh, Tamala would uh, suggest to uh, to like approach. Um, uh, to like approach from the south, like try and get as, m as close to the mountain as we can, and then like approach where there are no windows, so it'll be harder to see us. Um, yes, we must find some way in that uh, is not being hopefully watched, and we must find uh, sure there has got to be some, uh, should we say, secret way in. Okay, so you're saying uh, over on the right-hand side of the picture? Lower yeah, like it, I, like I don't see a window there. I mean, I know it's hard to tell. It's just hand drawn. Yeah, or whatever, what, you, but... what you've got here, well, I can't make it big now. Um, what you've got here is, oh, yeah, okay. So yeah, you've, you've got, um, there's, there's like, there's a window there. I mean, it's dark. You probably can't see that well. There, you know, there's windows here. There's some kind of a door here. I mean, there's windows everywhere, but they are actually closed, mostly, and shuttered. You know, not these, because they can't be closed, I guess. I mean, it's, it's nighttime and dark and cold, so. But uh, are the windows on that side? I think there's one right there, but I need to just read this quickly to see. And that's actually where, by the way, the chimney is right there, too. Like, the, you can't, it's not really very clean, clear. It looks like a little spire. That's where the chimney is on that south side. Uh, let me just check, but I do not believe that there is a window. There. I'm not sure if there's a window there or not, I should say. Or a door, for that matter. Oh. Yeah, no. There's no window on that side. That's true. Oh, actually, okay, so then I guess that's the direction that uh, that's the direction that my character would want to uh, Ptolemaea would want to approach from. 
uh, try and like be sort of center there. Yeah, I mean it's it's a long valley, so you can you could walk you know quarter of a mile, half a mile away to the south and go against the wall and come all the way back, so you don't have to pass in front of any of that if you want. We'll just take a little while, but you certainly can do that if you want to be extra cautious, and that's totally fine. Um, so you do that, you know, and you come along the side of the cliff where it seems you'd be the least likely to be seen. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you end up at that side of the building. There is no entrance on this side. Um, nor are there windows, as you noted. It is two stories, but there's no windows on either, uh, either story on this side. It's completely blocked in. I uh, told I would like to like just creep over towards the front and like she's going to get down like kind of low like squatting basically and like sort of peek her head out around the to the front so she can look out front and see if she sees anything. Uh, okay, so you're like over here at the bottom of the screen. Um, yeah, I mean you see basically this overhang. Um, where's this overhang? Let me give you a description because I think you can see what's there. That is uh, so it's a slightly raised um, it's a portico so it's got like basically columns um, you see essentially a uh, a door there um, and you see just a bunch of columns. Uh, there's like, it's like columns, but there's between the columns is like a lattice. So you can see through it because you can see onto the area. It's basically a porch. Um, and there's a couple of columns in the middle holding it up. Uh, but you, there's nobody standing there. Um, there is a door in there that goes into the interior of the building. And there's an entrance, but you have to kind of walk around to the front, if you will, where it says where that path is. That's basically where the entrance is. And you don't see any people. What about on the uh, second story of it? Is it, I mean, is it an open area on the second story of it? That overhang or it's covered? Uh, it, that's actually interior. Yeah, there's actually like a room up there. Okay. Yeah, and that has windows on it, actually. So she'll like give Aetherog a symbol, which basically, you know, uh, they would have discussed is like, you know, hold on, basically. Um, and she's going to move silently to the door that's under the overhang. Okay. Uh, and she wants to listen at it. So I don't know if I need to do a move silent and also a listen or what. Yeah, what's your move silent? Um, my move silent is... Uh, I thought I read it. I could have swore I wrote it down. I'm not, gosh, dog it. Uh, I'm sorry. I guess I didn't write it down. <coughs> Let's see. It's based off of my. Ooh, Is it based off uh, my fighting ability or? Skills execute half the amount of movement rate. Um, no, no, it's not that. No, it's a, you use the thieves. It's on the thief. It's under thief. Um, okay, so yeah, it doesn't say anything about it being uh, only outside or anything. Even they are outside, actually. Um, so let me look it up. It's uh, under thief. Let's see. You are seventh level. You are yeah. so it's on page twenty-three of the book. Uh, move silent would be eight and twelve. Okay, and is your dex 15, sixteen or better? Um, it's a, my dex, uh, is a 15. Okay. So then you have eight and 12. Okay. So I rolled that. Um, okay. And you, you're here. Noise, um, is that's not based on your level. That's just straight up. I think it's three and six. Yeah, sorry. I could have swore I wrote it down and I guess I didn't mm -hmm. apologize. Yeah, done now. Um, all right. So you, you creep around and like I say, that area is, um, it's a, you know, it's basically a porch. Um, there's nothing, it's, it's, the, it's like the dead of winter now. So you do see some like pots where they probably have some plants and stuff growing when it's a little bit of nicer weather. But right now they brought them inside and they're just kind of sitting on the sides. 
Um, and you creep up to the door, which is, you know, it's, not, it's an exterior door, so it's a heavy door. Um, and you listen. Let's see. Um, you see on the door, it says, it has an inscription um, in just the, the standard kind of common tongue. Um, it says, he who sees the balance may enter. Um, there's, okay, so let me read the description. So this area is raised above the ground. Like I said, it's a porch. Uh, there's a description on the door. It says, he who, he who sees the balance may enter. There's nine pillars that support uh, the floor above. Um, and like I said, there's, there's ornamental screens that close everything off like a lattice. Um, let's see. The door is, uh, you don't hear anything on the side of the door. And if you were to jiggle the handle or whatever, it is locked. Let's see, that's down over there. Let me just make sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, you don't, you, it, the door's locked and uh, you don't hear anything. Um, you see soft falling of snowflakes on the ground. Okay, she's gonna, uh, how far away is, is East Rog right now? Well, I mean, if you were to just walk to the edge and talk through the lattice, he's like, 10 feet away from you. If you want to go around the side of the building, it's probably, that's going to be like a full move. It's going to be like 40 feet. You have to come back out around and go. Okay. If I were to move, if I were to move to the doors labeled Scalia, how, how far away is with East Rugby? Oh, from you, he's down at the end of the building. So you would be like 10, 20, 30, 40, about 80 feet and 90 feet. Okay. All right. So she will signal to him. To like move up cautiously, basically, um, and she's gonna she's gonna try and head down towards that Scalia door because you said there was like the round tower. You said it looked like there was no one in there, right? Or I, I mean, I said there was no smoke coming out of it. Okay. I mean, it's it's clo it's enclosed, so you can't really touch ah. There's no lights on, so that's probably a good sign. Most of the windows here that you do see are actually shuttered. I mean, like I said, it's nighttime. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I mean, there's no obvious uh, occupation to it. Um, so, uh, Ifra, do you want to, We're, what do you want to do? You're basically in the corner of the building. Were we given any information on um, maybe where the, uh, like the uh, sleeping dormitory was and what end of the building it would be on? Um. Uh, you believe that it is, let's see, what do you, what do you have known that? Probably, he's probably been to visit, right? So he probably knows where it is. Uh, it's, it's on the, uh, um, what do you know, the basement, it's, there in, it's below ground. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I guess you would actually know this too. So basically this place, I probably should have said this, um, cause you would know now you've got a lot more information. Um. There's the that's butt up against the side of this uh, cliff because there's like a hot spring inside the cliff, which is which is why you only see one place where there's smoke coming up because this build this building is basically internally heated um, through the basement uh, through this like hot spring. So so they sleep down down below because that's the warmest part of the building. So uh, it's basically below ground. It would be like in the basement. Um, at least that's where most of them are. There are some also on the second floor, on the you know the, the upper floor. The um, the middle floor, the floor that you're basically on ground floor, would be like where they would, the, the, you know, they, this reception and stuff like that. You basically have that much information. So it would either be up one floor or down one floor. It wouldn't, it would definitely not be on this floor, as far as you could tell. Yeah, I mean, Ethrog will move up to the um, corner and stay on the south side of the um, overhang, you know, to try to, to, to kneel down there and hide you know, somewhere on the south side of that overhang behind that lattice in one of those columns and if she's going to move on up. Yeah, because you'll basically be obscured there from the, from like the tower or the wall if anybody comes up. Um, <clears throat> okay, you, you definitely do that. All right, so you're going to creep out and, and walk up to the to the main doors there? Uh, yes, and she would like to listen through those. You're going to listen at that door? Okay. Sure. Um... So, 
this is these are big, uh, big, huge double doors. It's still wooden, you know. They don't use metal doors because they're in the cold. Um, they're kind of ornate, um, and you put your ear up against it. There's a knocker on there and everything. Um, you don't hear anything. Um, and again, if you were to try it, the door is locked. Um, you are kind of out in the open right now, too. Just to, just to be clear. You don't see anybody, okay. but there's nowhere really to hide where you are. Yeah. Okay. All right. She's gonna she's gonna make her way back over towards uh, Etherog then, and so she can get under that. Uh, so she can get under that uh, hangout. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you're back around the other side together. <clears throat> Looking at the uh, overhang, is it to the second floor? Is there any? Um... Like something like you threw a, a rope up there with a grappling hook that you can grab onto to climb up there. Yeah, I mean, there's a few windows, uh, though they're shuttered, uh, that you could probably throw a grappling hook up onto, or you could throw it up onto the roof itself. You know, you probably think it would probably stick up there. The roof is, uh, you know, it's it's like stone shingled, so you know, you 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 could probably climb onto the roof with a rope roof with a rope if you wanted to. We could. Try to enter from the second floor if you would like. We're gonna have to, to climb up and hope that one of those windows are open and it, it doesn't directly open up to someone in the bed asleep. But if it does, that I guess it will be their final sleep. Well, I can do that. Or I could attempt to pick these locks real quick. Well, whatever would be the the solid choice is what we need to do, at least to get inside. Let me try the locks first. And she will uh, pull her tools out and um, and try to try and pick the lock. Okay. Uh, in the under the portico in the the, the porch area. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Uh, good. You can roll for that. Um, it is actually a pretty hard lock, so it's going to be. Uh, do you do you have your stats? Did you find it, or you need to look it up? Um, eight, twelve. Okay. Eight and twelve. Right, so it's going to be six and twelve because the lock's actually a difficult lock. Uh, okay. Three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You uh you you finesse the the lock a little bit, and you know it's 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 tricky, but maybe you've seen one of these kind of locks before. And uh, you're able to 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 pretty quickly and and, uh, and quietly pop the lock on that door. Okay. So she uh, fills the she hears the familiar click and fills it under her finger and she uh, reaches up towards the knob and gives it a slow pull and she looks towards uh, Aetherug and just nods to him. Um, and she's gonna like uh, th- I'm guessing it pushes in. Um, yeah, let's say so. Okay, she wants to, like, before she fully pushes in, uh, she would like to try to, like, run her fingers up along the inside a little bit, um, and see, like, especially around the top, fill around, and see if there's any kind of string for any kind of traps or anything. Okay, um... Before you open the door, you're going to just kind of feel around to see if when you open it, you're going to open it a little bit and see if there's it making any pull or whatever. You're basically yes. saying if, if, if you open the door, if it'll set up a trap. Okay. Yes. Sure enough, let me check. Uh, yeah, you don't see anything like that. Um, seems pretty pretty uh, free of things like that. Um, you know, it's a, it's a school, so maybe you figure they probably wouldn't do that, but it's always good to be safe, I guess. Okay, then she'll quick, she'll, uh, open the door then and uh what does she see cool oh that's a good way to say it um you i believe you must make a sorcery saving throw let me just check yeah uh make a sorcery save okay uh uh, six under thirteen. That's okay. that saves, right? Yeah. Uh, for a saving throw, you want to roll over. Oh well, 
My saving throw is a 13. Does that sound right for a level 7? Um, really not, um, yeah, that's right. You know, I keep um, thinking I'm a freaking higher level than I am for some reason. I don't know why. I keep thinking. Seven's pretty it's high. A single, it's a single save. That's right. Yeah, unless you might have – this is against sorcery, so you don't get it. I mean, like, I think you probably get about it. Certain classes have benefits against certain ones. I don't think you – Yeah, have. I, have, I have. Like, I have benefits. Yeah, no, I don't, get a, I don't get a benefit to sorcery. But, yeah, no. I, I just – I don't know. I just – for some reason, I keep thinking I'm level 11. I have no idea why I keep thinking that. Oh, no, not quite that high. Seven's pretty high. Um, you open the door, and what you see is absolute and total darkness as the enchantment on the door uh, causes you to be blinded. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Well, then um, she tries not to freak out. Um, you know. Uh, and... Uh, She'll she'll take a step back and she's just gonna kind of give a signal of like you know uh, to to uh, to either I kind of like to kind of like back off a little bit. Okay, I mean yeah, I mean you're seventh level scout. I mean you probably have a pretty even though you're freaking you probably are freaking out slightly into inside. You you have enough wherewithal to like turn in the right direction. So you're not like signaling off randomly and <laughs> you know, you know where you were. So yeah, you, you, you reach back and signal to him. Obviously you don't really know anything, I guess at this point, uh, Ithra, cause nothing went off. Like you didn't see anything. It was more yeah. Like, I mean, it, but if she gives like a, a, um, a sign of a caution or whatever, he'll sneak back down to the corner of the building, you know, back down to the South West corner. Okay. Perfect. All right, so you're standing there. Would you have the door like partially open? Um, you can't see anything because you're blinded. You re- you turn, I guess, behind you, and you know, and then you hear you hear his footsteps as he kind of moves around, and you can hear him kind of crunching the snow a little bit. And he's on the other side of the building. Uh, so, what do you want to do now? Hello, man. Um, can she attempt to like follow his footprints, his footsteps? If she uses maybe like uh, discern noise. Yeah, you just want to walk out there. Uh, I want to follow him as silently as I can. Maybe putting my hand up against the building as uh, as like a support. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you have a problem doing that. You you you, you know where you are, so uh, you're stuck with the blindness. Um, well, another question: if if I could see that she's like struggling walking, you know, would I think would I be I'd be wise enough to know that something happened, maybe to run up there to help her in? Yeah, at some of course. point. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, you're going to turn around and you'll like have your hands out. and But I think you could probably walk in a straight line towards the trunk. I don't think that any of that would be a problem. Uh, if you, you, you would almost know, uh, I mean, you've seen her moving so lightly and she's going to be, while still probably light because of her expertise, she's clearly struggling slightly. So uh, yeah, you can certainly run over there and help her. Yeah, I mean, he would do that. He would go over and he, he wouldn't even say anything. He would probably scare her because, you know, she doesn't know who it is running towards her, but he'd run up there and kind of grab her and pull her back down to the hiding spot there in the corner, southwest corner. Yeah, like once once we get to a place where, you know, she's more or less, you know, thinks that they might be safe, she'll like whisper to him like, I can't see. When did this happen? When I opened the door, it must have been trapped with sorcery. There is uh, something I can do to uh, protect myself from from that, but there's nothing I can do for you even now. Um, there is no long uh, how long this enchantment may last on you, though. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to be able to clear such a condition either. Um, I guess the only thing, I mean, we can't just wait either because we only have so much time. Well, we will wait the minimal time that we can and see what happens. Um, Yeah, I mean, I don't know how long you want to wait. Let's say you wait. You know, you're 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 a spellcasting type. But you're a warlock, right? So, uh, you know, you wait, let's say, half an hour or even an hour, 
uh, thinking that most spells would, would, if it was going to wear off, it would wear off in that kind of time period. Um, but after that amount of time has gone by, um, you're still blind. Um, also, you do hear, I mean, because you're sitting here for an hour and be, being quiet, um, you do hear um, some like occasional noise and maybe you peek around and see uh, on the guard tower in the front. So you know there's definitely guards there. They're probably just inside the tower. Um, like like once or twice you hear like fo footsteps like walking across the wall. Um, so you definitely know there's... Is that, the, uh, is that the round tower the, yeah. uh, by the point bridge? Exactly. Okay. And that where it says gate and everything, like that's a five foot... Uh, I mean, the way they drew it, it looks like you can't walk across it, but um, that's five feet wide across the whole thing. So like they can walk from the tower to where it says square tower. So you definitely hear like probably once during that time period, you hear like a couple of uh, exchanges of like, you hear somebody walk towards, you know, across it. Then a couple minutes go by and you hear more step footsteps coming back the other way. And then you hear a person walk again. So you, you, you could probably interpret that as like a change of guard or something has happened. So you, you know, there's definitely guards in that tower. And we know that the um, army itself will be here in about a day? About three days, yeah. Three days, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you just don't know how long, um, you know, how long that the, the child has, like, what's going on. Because from, from everything that you, the, the, the wizard had thrown some bones and stuff and, and uh, you know, mentioned that this, this sorcerer or whoever that's holding this place is, is a ruthless killer and would even kill their own people, so... They're, they're not, uh, they don't know what's going to happen. Etherarg would look and he would go, we've waited uh, almost an hour for your condition to improve and it has not. Uh, we must retreat back uh, away from this building and, and, and wait it out. And if it does not uh, improve, do you still give us enough time under dark? We will have to wait till nightfall of the next day. Yes, I agree. There's nothing more we can do. Okay, so you're, you're going to go back to the hills? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if her condition hadn't improved, but he would make sure that she secured that, even being blind, he would want to make sure that she secured that door when she come out, or if it's still standing kind of open. Okay, yeah, you just have to go back and do that. You know, that's fine. You can walk back and do it. If you want yeah, I mean, he would make sure the door secure then. Yeah, you can close the door. Uh, it, nothing happens when you close the door. Um, yeah, uh, you can retreat back into the hills if you want. Um, and uh, find a place to to kind of... Uh, it's it's more or less barren, but you can find like you know a spot between two hills where you can kind of sit there um, and uh, wait it out the night. It is... I mean, you don't have really supplies for that kind of stuff because you weren't planning on camping. But uh, you can certainly just sit up all night. That's more than reasonable. Um, let me do patrol check. Fantastic. Okay. You are. I mean, you're you're clearly waiting and and uh, being cautious because you're sitting in one spot. So you hear um, approaching after probably like another like let's say two hours. So now it's probably like. It's definitely like the middle of the night, like the moon's already on the other side of the sky and it's starting to go down even. Um, you hear uh, approaching foot footsteps and actually uh, voices, people talking. All coming towards us? Yep, they're heading in your direction. And she's still blind? Yep. And there's nowhere to hide? Is there no like brush or trees or? I mean, not really. Uh, it's dark. You could try to like duck down and hide, but you're not, you're not gonna have a great chance of hiding. But you can certainly try. Yeah. Etherarg would um he would try to uh talk um Ptolemy into um hiding somewhere. You know, he would try to 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 obscure somewhere in some shadows or something and he would just stand up, prepare himself. All right. Yeah, you can do that. I mean you're um like I said, you hear them coming. So I'm actually gonna I'm going to roll uh, to see if they're surprised because even though they're looking, they're not, you know, I'll, I'll give you a chance. Um, if they're surprised, then they don't see you. So you could, whatever you could stay, that, that's going to be how I'm going to work out your being hidden or not. They won't actually be surprised, but if they, if I roll that they're surprised, then they don't see you. Okay. 
No, five. Okay, so they definitely see you. So you're you're kind of crouched down in a, in a I'm gonna fight them if they have to position. Tell me, you're I guess are you hiding as best you can, being blinded? Um, no. Um, I mean, if she's hearing the voices and stuff, uh, she's gonna grab her short bow and uh, pop an arrow in it, and um, and you know, like if she hears um, if she hears uh, Aetherog like you know, engage in battle or anything, or, you know, like he's running out, she'll, she'll just try to fire an arrow towards the vo- voices. I mean, she probably will have, like, a very small chance to actually hit anything, but she's going to at least try. Okay. <laughs> I mean, she already agreed to go down fighting with him, so. No, no, I understand. I just, I thought you were going to say, like, I'm going to take my sword, and if they come close to me, you're going to use a bow when you're blind. That's amazing. <laughs> Listen, no. Go out with style. I love it. <laughs> um, all right. You hear and then see. Um, they are, when they kind of come into view where you're going to definitely see each other, um, they're, they're only about 30 feet away. So like they're literally like they, they kind of come up, they crest a hill and you're whatever, you're in your, your battle stance and they see you. Um, there are five people. They are, I'll give you a quick description so you can decide. Um, Three of them are wearing like armor, like chain or chain armor. Uh, one is in it just wearing like furs or robes, and one is wearing like kind of a leather armor. Um, and they see you, and they they immediately uh, you know get ready like they're going to come at you. Well, actually, well, I'll tell you because you're. They don't say anything. Um. Yeah, they do. They they're going to. Um, there's a female who's just in robe. She's not like dressed. She doesn't have any weapons actually on her that you can see. Um, and she, she looks at you and she says, uh, stay where you are. And then the, the, the fighting people in, in, in armor uh, draw, you know, they they have their weapons. So whatever they draw them and, and they're, they're getting ready to like come at you depending on what, what the result of however this uh, interaction goes. Have they seen, or do I think they've seen Patalma yet or just they're concentrated on me? They seem to only be looking at you. I mean, it, right. of course, you're standing there with the... Well, then again, she's standing up with the bow in her hands. So no, they see her. <laughs> you got your bow out, right? Because you weren't laying on the ground anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, they see her then if she's up. Uh, women never listen. Um, yeah, I mean, seeing the woman in the robes, I mean, um, Ethrard would probably... Um, recognize possibly what she is or is capable of doing so um if they start you know the, the moment they start approaching you know she tells me to stay where i'm at and they start approaching i am going to cast flaming missile and use all three of them and shoot at the lady okay uh and what do you, do you want to do uh call me uh, uh she hears the if she hears Ethrog like Letting off magic because like it's it has to be audible and stuff, right? She'll fire her missile uh, and she'll try to fire it at the lady that she heard say, "Stay there." Yeah, I mean, I suppose she's probably the only person, the only voice you've heard. So, um, okay, so you're going to shoot an arrow. You're going to do a spell. Uh, let's roll uh, initiative, side initiative. So, uh, whoever wants to roll it, um, you can roll it, Crystal. Um, yeah, let the blind girl roll it. Uh, what what is it to initiative again? Straight D six. Uh, okay. Yep, since you wouldn't stay hidden, you can bring us our death. <laughs> One. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the they're moving forward. Even though, like, she, what, she was going to cast a spell, because you haven't actually done anything yet, I'm going to say she's not going to cast it now. So only the three, basically, fighters are going to move forward. They're going to try to uh, to basically knock you out. Like, they're going to come at you with weapons to, to clobber you. Um, I'm going to say uh, two on... Uh, Sorry, two on Ethrog and one on uh, Falome. So the first one against Ethrog, she swings and gets a 14, which hits AC2. So that hits you. So you get whacked um, for uh, five points of damage. All right. He's, he's trying to, he's, he's hitting you with the blunt of his sword. So uh, kind of make a note, it's kind of non lethal. Like they're trying to take you alive. At least for now. You haven't driven drawn any blood yet, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> hmm. Although, because you did get hit, you're going to lose your spell. Yep. Um, 
the second guy misses you with the five on the roll. Um, the uh, the one guy that, that charged at uh, Dalame, Dalame, it's actually a woman. She charges at you and she rolls a seven, which is not going to hit you at all. Um, okay, your spell fizzles because you got whacked, uh, Ethron. Now, do you lose it though? You don't lose it, yeah. do you? You do, yeah, actually. Oh, you do lose the slot? Okay. Yeah, you lose the slot, yeah. Um, uh, Ethrog, uh, lose, lose the spell. Um, actually, you know what? There's an optional rule, which I think I was going to use, but I got to look it up. It's, I think you make some kind of a check. So just hold on one second, see if you actually lose it. Um, yeah, I can't, I didn't. Yeah, it's like a, there's like a, there's, and I was going to use that because losing spells is kind of, it's harsh. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Crystal, go ahead and make an attack roll. You're going to have to roll really high. I rolled a six. Is that high enough? No, it is not. <laughs> you get whacked and your arrow flies off randomly. Um, I believe that you... Let me just quickly... Let me just see how this rule works. Concentration. Sorry, guys. I'll just say for now, since I don't know, that I'll just say you don't lose it, but it doesn't go off this round. I think there is some kind of concentration where you can still cast it, but uh, since I don't know, that's just going to be a rule for now, okay? All right. You, you won't lose the, sp- the slot, but you don't cast it because you got whacked. Um, okay, next round. So you basically got whacked by this one guy who's who's uh, with the blunt of his sword. The other guy's swinging at the blind uh, uh, scout. And uh, yeah, what do you guys want to do this round? Uh, Yithroig would have no choice for the guy on top of him. This time he'll go to his bastard sword. Okay. Uh, Talame will pull her, her, um, her, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, her, f- uh, Falcata, and, uh, are you know what? No, actually she's going to pull her, uh, plus two dagger. Okay. And, uh, she'll just try stabbing at who's ever in front of her. Okay. Fair enough. Um, all right, so uh, they're going to continue to attack you. The, the fourth person in leather is going to stay back, as is the uh, the female who yelled. She's not doing anything yet because she thinks she she has the upper hand. So um, let's roll initiative. Do oh, you want to roll again, Crystal? Or actually, uh, I lost, so it's Tony. You lost, so yeah, I was going to say, so Tony. Uh, they rolled a five. Oosh. I rolled a one. Oh, my God. This module is not liking you guys. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, okay, they're gonna. So first guy's gonna swing at, at uh, oh, okay, that hits because he hit before with the that's a sixteen, so that that hits because a fourteen hit before. Um, oof, four points. On me. Yep. All right. The second guy swinging at you as well again with the blunt of a sword. That's an eleven. Eleven hits. Hold on, that guy is only. These guys are all different levels, so I have to look up each person. Eleven only hits AC six, so that does not hit you, right? Yep, I'm AC six. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that does hit you. Four more points. And finally, the one that's on Crystal rolls a nine, which is going to miss you because you have crazy good armor class. Um, even though you're completely, although you probably lose your dex bonus, but your magic armor is uh, still going to put you well above. Right? What's your AC if you uh, don't have your dex, Crystal? Um, four. four. Okay. Without my shield. Yeah, let me just check then. Uh, yeah, she's only fighter one. So fighter one with an 11 is only going to hit AC six. Okay, so now misses you. Um, your turn. Go for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ethrard, this first guy that's hit him twice uh, is pissed him off now. So he picks up the bastard sword two handed. I'm swinging it at two handed. So Casey hits. <laughs> oh, that may hit. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that hit armor class zero, I believe, exactly. Well, yeah, that hits. That will do four, six, uh, nine damage, I believe, total. Oh, nice. Two-handed. Okay. Whoosh. All right, you take a good chunk out of him. I mean, he's still standing. This is actually the toughest guy. Yeah, yeah. and he's not – He's. I mean, Ethrog's not trying to knock this guy out. I mean, he's trying to kill him. I mean, he knows that, that that's that's just the way it is. Yeah, of course. Um. Do you get? Yeah, you. I get a three-two. Yeah, that's my one of my uh, master weapons. So I get three-two. All right, so next round you'll get two attacks. Okay, um, Crystal. 
Um, I am randomly stabbing with my plus two dagger. I rolled a nine. Yeah, that's probably not going to hit. Yeah, no. Definitely not. All right, so you swing wildly with the dagger and miss. Um, okay, next round. Uh, so, Tintonio, I'll back to you for initiative, Crystal. <laughs> They're still going to pound on you. The, the other two are staying back for now. Five again. Four. Okay, same thing. Two guys around trying to go. Uh, first, the guy that you hit, uh, either out, uh, he, uh, he, he staggers back and misses terribly as he tries to swing back at you. The other guy comes in, though, um, and actually gets you probably at the side, in the side of you because you turned. Ooh, four more points. All right. Um, against uh, the, the one fighting you, Crystal, um, uh, swings. Oh, my God. 20. Nice. So, Crits you. Um, by the way, there, well, you can't, you're blind, so you don't know, but uh, she's attacking you with a. Uh, what happens, Jeff? It's a mace, I believe. Yeah. Smack. Ouch. Is that a mace? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whack the hmm. mace. <laughs> All right. D6 for the mace. Four points for the mace, um, but it's a crit, so let me roll the crit. One, which I think is just plus two damage. Look that up. Uh, yeah, plus one damage. Okay, so five points with the mace. Whack. And you're like, hey, a mace. That's not fair. <laughs> um, and now it's your turn. On my two attacks, I can split them up, can't I? Between opponents. Yep. You yeah, I'm gonna, them. I'm gonna. The guy that just hit me, I'm gonna hit him first. I hope, and right. then I'll use the other one on the one that's already injured. Cool. So I'm going to two-handed swing to that one first. Hot dog, that's a 17 on a die, so that's negative something. <laughs> like negative five. It's armor class negative five. <laughs> that definitely hits um, <laughs> Let's see. Force nine damage again to him. Same nice. damage. And then I just, um, you know, turn to the other one that's injured, the one that staggered back and swing at him. Hot dog, another good roll. That's armor class uh, negative one. But he'll only take two, three, six damage. Okay, he's still up because he's 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 pretty rugged. He looks beat down. I mean, you you definitely hurt this guy, hitting him twice with two mighty blows. The the one guy you've only hit once though, the second guy, he he almost falls to the ground. Like he's basically blood's dripping from him t- terribly, and he's kind of looking a little dazed in his eyes. Um, Crystal. I rolled a 12, which would normally hit armor class three. I don't know what. No, I don't not. know what. I was, I'm giving you a minus four penalty, so that's not going to hit, unfortunately. Okay, yeah. Though, though close, if, if you didn't, if you weren't blind. <clears throat> okay. Um, so these guys, now that you've taken a big chunk out of them, the, the, uh, you hear the woman yell, enough! And let's roll initiative. Uh, who won? Lord lost that time. You guys keep losing, so it's back to Crystal. It's again. Tony's turn, yeah. Tony's turn. Oh, is it? Okay. Golly, a two. Okay. Man. All right. I think let me just go through the order. I don't know if spells go off first. No, it goes melee, missile, magic, movement. Okay, so uh, the melee attacker is going to go off first. Guy, the, there's two guys on, on Tony's character. 13 for the first guy. That hits a C three. Does that hit yep. you? Second guy rolls a three and misses terribly. He's he's definitely beat. Um so first guy hits you, he does three points. All right. Now that now that's real damage. So make that a note of that separately. I mean basically if you oh. go to zero, you're gonna be out anyways, but the other stuff will heal faster. Yeah, you 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 heard him bad now, so he's like, Oh, screw that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh now the the mace wielder on uh Crystal's character. Uh, rolls a 13 as well, which hits AC 6. So that actually doesn't hit you, does it? Or it does. It just hits you, right? With, with no... Uh... No, I have an AC of 4. Yeah, no, you missed again. Yeah, she probably like clinks off with surprisingly tough leather armor. <laughs> um, blocks the blocks the blow. Um, unfortunately, though, the, uh, the spellcaster is now stepping up. And she is going to cast color spray I think but actually I don't know if she can do that so maybe she won't do that maybe she'll change her mind because I'm realizing you're all engaged with her people's 
Quick I mean, I'm already blind, so I don't know if it would do anything to me. Well, she doesn't know that. I mean, she would know if it covers the whole area or not. I just don't quick know because it's the first time I've cast color spread in this game. I, I think it affects everyone in the area. Probably. Yeah, I'm not sure on this system how it yeah. works. Let's see. Da, 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 da. From the sun's going to the rainbow of colors or the five feet, 20 feet long. Yeah, so 20 feet of terminus. It affects 1d6 creatures. The ones closest to the caster first, which actually wouldn't be you guys. So no, she's not going to do that. Okay, so she will not cast a spell. She'll just stand back and wait. She's, she's waiting for a clearing. Um, so it's actually your turn now. Yeah, I'm going to swing at the uh, the one that's the you know probably not the leader, but you know the one that was the, that I that hit me first, the one that's more yeah. of a warrior type, and try to take him down. Hot dog, that is a armor class negative four, and it does eight damage. That's enough. It's just yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah, you chop it. You chop the big brute down. And he's actually wearing plate armor, uh, and you chop into him, and he and he he grabs his gut and drops his weapon to the ground and falls dead in front of you. Um, Etherog looks at the when it's real injured and just, well, of course, they can't see. He's put his skull mask on, so they can't see his face, but he just, you know, stares that skull mask towards him next. Nice. Uh, go ahead, Crystal. Um, I rolled a 15, which would be a, an 11 at minus 4, which hits armor class, which hits armor class 4. That hits. Cool. Uh, three points of damage with the magic dagger. Nice. All right. You stab into the... Uh... Three points of damage does not quite kill them, though. Okay. Ouch, they say, um, as that round ends. And uh, Is that a magic dagger? <laughs> it's like, ouch, ouch, ouch. Um, okay. The, uh, you see the other, the, the kind of the, the fifth person that was like in the lighter armor, um, looks at the situation that's going on and starts to, to back away. I mean, uh, kind of looking towards where the uh the school is like they're gonna they're gonna bolt basically um but let's roll initiative i think it's back to who crystal yep i keep losing so <laughs> back to me four five yeah i won hey, one hey, hey. all right just go first what you want to do um stabby stab the bitch with the mace yeah. um no i'm not gonna stabby stab the bitch with the mace Okay. I just don't feel like it right now. Yeah, I can understand that. Okay. I'll take my two attacks on the guy that's sitting next to me. I really don't have no choice. Even though if I see the other guy fixing to run, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to take a chance of not taking this guy out first. Yeah, you, you could theoretically, I believe, um, you could... Oh, no, you can't. Okay, I was thinking you could actually move and attack him, but you can't. Armor class four for six. You see four hits and kills. So he's dead. You can actually, since you don't need to take a second attack, you could actually move if you want to chase the guy. He just won't be able to attack him. Because he is going I want to run. I want to run up to the uh, the uh, robe woman. Can I move up to her? Like jump right in front of her with this sword yeah. running towards her? That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm running her. All right, cool. Okay, and okay, so then she is going to, uh, well, she was just going to stand by and see what's happening. Now she's going to scream because there's a person charging at her. <laughs> um, the, uh, the one that's on, the, the, the mace wielder is going to continue to batter our, our blinded scout, or try to anyways. Uh, or she was missing, though, with an 11. I don't think she has anything. Uh, 11 misses you. Okay, so she's somehow blinded. You are avoiding every blow. <laughs> um, and the other person bolts. They start running full, full, full tilt towards the, uh, towards back to the school, um, and that's the end of that round. So next round, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm gonna take out the woman. I hope sword okay. melee. Yeah. She's clearly gonna try to cast a spell on you, um, and the mace person's gonna try to attack, uh, you know, Crystal's character. Are you just stabbing still, Crystal? That's basically your plan. Yep. Okay, you won, so roll initiative. Six. Oof. Um, five. Oof. Okay. And when melee happens first, so the um, the one with the mace is going to try to hit you with a 14. That hits uh, 
AC of five, which misses you because you're AC four. Damn, that armor saving your life. And the wizard cut buds off. She shoots the color spray at you, Tony. Um, let's see. Merge of rainbow. Uh, 1d6 creatures. It's only really you. Um, those close to the caster. So you get a sorcery saving throw. Sorcery saving throw. Modified uh-huh. by your defense adjustment for dexterity, if you have one. Uh, no dex. I got a low dex. Okay. Yeah, well, I do. I got a minus one. So, um, But I got a plus two, so it'll be a plus one on sorcery roll. to save. Hey, I made it. I rolled an 18. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, if you save, nothing happens. If you had failed, you would have been blinded uh, because of your hit dice. Um, oh, that's interesting. So here's a little hidden, which we can actually use since Crystal's blind. Uh, that's basically what I'm doing. At the end of Color Spray, it says, blind creatures always lose initiative and suffer minus four penalties on attack rolls, armor class, and saving throws. That sounds about right for how you're going to be. Here's yep. what I'm doing. So, um, okay, so she does that. The the other person misses with the weapon. So now it's your turn. Oh, I'm gonna sling the sword into that witch. <laughs> oh no, that's probably going to miss. Let me look. Get up my bonuses. Uh, well, armor class four. That hits. But I rolled two ones on damage, so oh. I will only do uh, plus three, so that's five. Okay. Well, that's still Fire pretty damage. good. <laughs> She's not dead, but she you you cut into her, and she she like touches the where the wound is, and this and looks at her hands covered in blood, and and you see her face get very pale. She looks very very hurt. Um, and Crystal. Uh, I was gonna stab her, but upside did not to. I mean, she's she seems like a nice enough lady and everything, you know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next round. Uh, this uh, uh, witch is gonna. I think she has another spell. She's trying to cast another spell. Um, hey, I rolled a five on initiative. Okay. She rolled a two. So go first. Yeah, I'm. Uh, my two attacks on her. Okay. Oh no, that's gonna miss. I imagine. Let me look. It may not. Uh, AC is four, actually. So uh, that's that first one will miss then. So they don't hit AC six. Oh yeah, that's better. Uh, that one's going to hit her for hey four, eight, uh, eleven damage. Well, she only had one hit point, so <laughs> that was a clear cleave through the body. Oh yeah, I mean he just he he cares not that it's a woman. He just yeah. cleaves right straight through her parts. Yeah, she she drops you know in in two pieces on the ground. Her 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 face still her eyes wide open in amazement that that she died so quickly and painfully. Um, Crystal, can I move though now since I haven't moved? You can yet? move in the second uh, phase. Okay, well I, yeah, I do want to move in the second phase. Yeah. Um. I mean, do I, I mean, I guess I, I mean, I said I was going to attack. I don't know if I can. Yeah. Why can't you? Oh, I thought she died. No, the other person died. The woman I'm fighting died. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. I, didn't, I, re- I thought you were, I thought you were attacking the one that was on me. Okay. No, no, no. He went after the spellcaster. I actually rolled a 19, so that's a 15 <laughs> that hits armor class zero. That is. And does five points of damage. Uh, mm-hmm. Nope. Four points of damage. Four points of damage. So five, because of my strength mod, right? Wait, do I have a strength mod? I don't have a strength mod. So four points of damage. You stab your dagger into them, and you hear kind of a gargling, like, uh, 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 and you you feel like a heavy weight as the body falls to the ground, um, and your dagger slips out of the, you know, your dagger's in your hand, so it slips out of the wound. It is a second phase. You can move if you want. Uh, yeah, I mean, do I see the... Uh, Person fall real quick that Patalme just took out. Yeah, if you look back, you see him die. Yeah, I yell, I yell at her, "Stay here, do not move!" And I'm going to try to chase that guy down and run away if he's. Yeah, I mean, she agrees to that. She'll just kind of collapse to the ground. Okay, so you're like, what's your constitution? Oh, uh, it's pretty good. I think it's my second best stat. Let me look. Fourteen. Okay, so we'll do this. Roll under your con. I'm going to do the same thing with them to see if they have to stop before they get to back because you're actually the same movement. So. Oh, I rolled a 13. Oh, okay. They rolled a four. So first round, they're still moving. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say six rolls in there at home. So that's one. Uh, All right. So make again. another one. Yep. 
Oh, okay. nine. Oh, they passed again, so there you're both good. They still passed. Ooh, one. They also got one. <laughs> you can see them like probably like well, I guess they moved two rounds. So they're they're like eighty or so feet ahead of you, and you're basically pacing them. Yeah, I mean Ethrog knows that he's a big man, but he's trying his best to. Yeah, you're right there, so you can see. Yeah, go. Oh, I rolled right on the money, fourteen. All right, and they failed. So you 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 close uh, on them. So uh, you can actually, I mean, assuming if you you can do basically a charge attack if you want, because you're basically running up on them with a weapon. That's what I'm assuming you're doing, right? Oh yeah, because I'd have my sword out. Yeah, so go ahead. So I'm, I'm, I can charge into them and hit them. Yeah, because you can. How close, close are we to the uh, co- the uh, monastery though? You're two moves away, so you're you're basically just on the other side of that water. So you're pretty close. Oh yeah, he's gonna try his best and uh, hopefully see what he can do. Oh no! <laughs> oh. I knew it. I knew I'd roll bad. Oh, I rolled a two on the die. Oh no! Okay. Shoot. Yes, you 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 miss. I mean, in a charge you only get the one attack no matter what because that's that's how charge works. Um, so at that, um, you know, he stopped. So he's going to. Uh, Try to swing at you, and he's going to yell, "Help me!" And he's going to swing his sword, which he misses terribly. It's it's actually a dagger, and it's actually a woman. So <laughs> all those things that I said, he sword and swing all wrong. So she tries to stab you with the dagger and screams as loud as she can. Um, and let's go into initiative. So uh, go ahead, Will. She got a three, a yeah, six. Oh, yeah, she's realizing that if she runs, you're just going to hack her with the sword. She tries to stab you again, and roll a ten. Which her fighting ability is two. That it's AC eight. That doesn't hit you. Yeah, she's not a very good fighter. That's why she was running. <laughs> so go ahead, it's your turn. And I know that she's close enough. That's probably I, I'm. I would probably uh, induce that someone probably hurt her as, she, as loud as she's yelling. I would think. Yeah, you you would think there's a good chance. You haven't. I mean, if you're kind of like you know looking with your eyes quickly at towards the tower because you can see it, you don't see any movement there yet. But you assume that somebody could hear her. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me pull up this spell. Um, <laughs> get ready for this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to cast a spell. Okay. Um, Ethrog, uh, knowing that she's yelled for help, you know, um, he knows there's no chance of, of staying secret now. He stands back and he goes, I will put you out of your misery quickly. And you see both of his hands come up. And you see the flames come up out of his hands as he casts fireball on her. Oh Jesus! <laughs> fireball. He's gonna, he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna destroy her and, and burn that whole area and run back to get Ptolemy and try to get the heck out of Dodge. And probably yourself too. If you're that close to her, you realize that. I don't think you're not resistant to your own fireball. Uh, what about that ring? Oh, does it make you resistant? I think you just take less damage. I, 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 you have to look. I'll have to look. Oh, I'd have to pull it back up. I don't. Yeah, um, yeah I don't think it's 100%. Uh, maybe it is. If it is, that's awesome. <laughs> but I think it's just, uh, I think against magical fire, it's only like a resistance. But I mean, since we're in an open area and I'm casting it in front of me, it's still going to get me. It covers a certain area from where it hits, and she's right in front of you. So I mean, she it has to. Well, I'll look at the spell, but fireball usually covers an area. I mean, you could throw it at the school <laughs> and not her, but, if, but she's like literally 10 feet in front of you. Let me see. Let me just look up the ring first to see what it does. And then I'll look at the spell. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, golden ring set. Da, 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 da. Unharmed by heat or normal fire, plus two saving throw versus magical fire and minus one hit point per die. Uh, okay. Potentially so, negating, negating all damage. So it depends on what you roll, basically. But let me look up I fireball. Gotcha. I don't think in this issue. I think this is like first edition. You really can't control it. Fireball. It says, it says explodes into a 40 foot diameter spear of flames when it strikes the target designated by the caster. Right. So if you shoot her and she's 10 feet in front of you, then you're going to be inside the flame of it. Yeah. If you shoot it at like the, the building, then it wouldn't hit you, but it wouldn't hit her either, I guess. So in other words, you've got to be back 40 feet to use it and not get hit by it. Yeah, I mean, he and he would know that. So yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you wouldn't. Can I just it. change? Can I change spells then? I'll yeah, just, of course. Just, yeah, yeah. No, I'll I, use the fl- I'll use the uh, flaming missile then. I'll use yeah, the three. Yeah. Dark, I thought you were going to use like, uh, uh, you know what? Right. That's what I thought you were going to do, or, or uh, the finger one. <laughs> Throw a fire. Oh yeah, but yeah, but yeah, I was, but yeah. If he he would know, but it would engulf him too. So yeah, he'll definitely use the flaming missile then. Yeah, I mean, you're seventh level. You know how your stuff works. So that automatically hits, and three of them for 1d4 plus one. Uh, three, four, six plus three, so nine total. Enough. 
Yeah, you you blast those into her, and, and she erupts in flame, and you, you hear her scream still, but now she's screaming in pain as she falls dead. Yeah, he takes off running back to where uh, Ptolemy is then. Okay, let me just do a quick, see how long it took them to get him out of the tunnel. You kind of crest the hill and back down, and, and you're kind of out of sight, uh, you know, of the tower. So you don't know if they're following you or not. They, they didn't. You didn't see them. They, as far as you know, they they didn't see you yet. But clearly, you just left a roasted corpse in their uh, backyard. So <laughs> somebody knows you're here. You know. Um, yeah, I mean. And, uh, yeah, you head back out to to find your blinded companion. Uh, I, I, that was probably like a minute and a half that went by. Um, I don't know if you wanted to do anything up while that happened, up to home. Or if you were just standing there waiting, or was it something you wanted to do? Ptolemy. Um, I, I guess, I mean, I, I'm waiting on um, Aethrog to uh, return. Um, okay. Yeah. Just kind of in the, I've kind of collapsed into the snow, like just to my knees a bit, just kind of like, you know, <laughs> cursing under my breath that I can't see. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, you find her, you know where she is, you know, and you left a trail basically of you running through the, uh, the snow. So it's easy enough to catch up to her. Um, you know, the bodies are, ske- are skewing around the floor of uh, the, the area. Um, if you pause for a second and listen, um, you know, as you get there, you, you can hear voices yelling, uh, back towards the school area. You don't necessarily hear anybody coming towards you. You don't hear horses or anything, but you definitely hear voices yelling. So you definitely cause a scene over there. And Ptolemy is still blind. She is blind, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, um, uh, Ithrog looks at her and he goes, don't resist me. And he reaches down and, and grabs her and throws her up on his shoulder and takes off running to try to find a hiding spot. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can probably, uh, you know, being that there's only two of you and it's nighttime and, uh, you know, it's it's pretty open, so you're going to hear anything coming. I mean, if you want to just, you could avoid any patrols that come out looking for you, you figure. Um, is your plan just to get as far away as possible or are you going to circle back around? Yeah, I mean, he's because he, he knows that, that, you know, we sure that that group, uh, that lady, you know, let them know that they were going out looking for, her, you know, so they're going to yeah. find the, the bodies of all their companions. So, yeah, he's trying to get as far away right now as he can before okay. daylight. All right, yeah. So you, you run off and maybe you go towards the steeper parts of the mountain where it might be harder to, to, to find you. Let me see if there's any, if anybody in the you. No. And uh, you're actually able to, to kind of avoid any, wherever they went looking, uh, they didn't go far. So maybe they went out to the bodies and just collected them. Maybe they just went around a little bit. It seems like once you're a couple miles away, you don't hear voices anymore and you find a couple of like, as the more mountainous areas, you find some rocks just kind of hide behind and uh, wait it out and, you know, slowly but surely the sun starts to rise. Yeah, you know, as the sun comes up, uh, you know, he'll check on Ptolemy and you still cannot see. Yeah, she's still blind. Yeah, it, it's basically, it, yeah. You you feel like it's one of those things that's going to need some kind of uh, correction in order to go away. Yeah, I guess we would know um, probably which path that the uh, the uh, actual army is coming. We would know which, so, I mean. Yeah, you could cross the mountains and go meet them if you want. Uh, yeah, that's the only thing, for, hey, that's the only thing Aetherog would know to do. I mean, knowing that this is some type of permanent effect on her, he would, you know, head that way. I mean, he would. Uh, okay. Well, we know the eagle was waiting on us, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, you can go back to the eagle. Uh, yeah, we could go back to the eagle and let the eagle fly. Because I, I, would it fly us to the army? I mean, would it be able to take as, our instructions? As far as you know, uh, it will just when you get back, it's going to just fly directly back to the, uh, the village. Like you, oh, know, okay. you don't think it's intelligent? I mean, you're not sure. But as far as you know, I mean, you, it, so you could try, but you're not sure if it'll fly to the army or not. Uh, you could try it, basically. I'm not sure. Well, Ethrox's pretty wise. He would probably have some inkling, maybe that you know, he wouldn't be for sure. So he would, um, he yeah, would, I mean, he would just, he would grab Ptolemy and try to run on foot to to meet that army. Then, okay, yeah, you definitely can do that. So you're going to go across the the uh, the mountainous area, um, in order to cross over into the plains where the army would be. So let's see what happens. So, so any of that uh damage that wasn't permanent, like the knockout damage, you can basically over the course of the night resting, you can get that back. All right. Um, and also, if you were hurt regularly, you get 
Well, I guess you don't have food and you're in the wilderness. So I'm going to say you're not going to heal from that. I'll say that your, your wounds are going to stay because that, that seems more reasonable. Um, yeah, I mean, you can go a couple days without food. And, and it's snowing and there's water around. So you're probably fine to uh, to to not like die from that, you know. But you're, you're, you're going you're to be pretty starved um, unless you want to hunt or something. So, um, well, I guess you do have a bow. <laughs> Just a blind person that has <laughs> So you, yeah. uh, you you work your way over the build of the, the, the mountains. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Mountainous terrain. Um, you the first day, uh, you know, you crest the, the peaks and you can actually see um, off way off in the distance, you can see what you think might be the armies. Because you know, when you're on top of a mountain, you can see for miles and miles. Right. So uh, you you kind of plot your course and then plan to head down the mountain the next day. Um, let's see if anything happens overnight. Nope. And uh, you start work, working your way down the mountain to, to rendezvous with the uh, with the armies. And we'll do one final, do you encounter any craziness on the way to the army tech check? You do not. Okay, so you work your way, blinded, tired, slightly wounded uh, across the plains and you, you see rapidly approaching, um, you know, the warlord of course is, is leading because he's a warlord. Um, these, these, uh, these dog sleds, he's on a horse, you know, um, and uh, they don't stop for long. I mean, he stops and sees you and he, and he quickly asks, you know, he, he, he's, he says, why, where's my daughter? Where's the, where's the bird? What happened? Ethrog tells him about, you know, them uh, being caught trying to, uh, well, first he would ask, being exhausted, he would ask for some type of healer for uh, Ptolemy, if the old wizards with him, somebody to, to attend to her blindness. And then he would explain to the uh, warlord that, um, Unfortunately, that um, they were uh, caught trying to enter the deal and took out that party that come after him. He would explain to him what happened. Okay. He shakes his head, you know, he says, well, these types of things are never known if success will happen or not. I just hope that my, uh, my daughter is okay. We will siege the, the school and bring back the heads of those who have done such vile deeds. Um, and Ethrog will go with them if they'll let him. I mean, he wants, he'll, he'll go into battle with them. Yeah, he definitely do that. The, um, I'm trying to see, cure blindness is a cleric spell. Would he have a cleric? He has a magic user. Let's make a check to see if he has some kind of a clerical person with him. Yeah, it would be silly for him to go into battle without healers. So I'll say he has a, a cleric. And they're able to cast Cure Blindness on you, Ptolemy. Um, and you can see. Yay. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> you're like, after all, oh, you're somewhere else. Um, yeah, you're able to mount up with them um, and take part in the, the siege of the, uh, the school. I don't think we're really equipped to do a siege, but we're <laughs> We can do a skirmish since we're still still. If you want to guys do another battle, do you want to fight a little bit or do you want to wrap it? You're probably well, not going to get inside either. the school because breaking into the school at this point just seems like it wouldn't be something you'd be able to do. I mean, they know you're coming now, big time. Oh, I'm good either way. Whatever Crystal wants to do. Yeah. Do you want to fight Crystal? Um, not being blind, or you want to wrap here and we'll just uh, narrate it out. Uh, I'm 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 not, I'm honestly okay wrapping here because I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I, like, I wanted to break into the school, but the whole blindness thing happened. I mean, but if Tony wants to fight, we can. That's, that's oh, totally no. Fine as well. I mean, no, Ethrog's taken out enough. I mean, he's, he's definitely going to go into battle, but no, we don't have to do any more. I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I said we can wrap. Let Tony do some some cool narration for how it ends. <laughs> some, yeah, exactly. Tell some cool death, death blows that he makes. Yes. So exactly. So uh, being uh, fired up at the the uh, the situation and what uh, what occurred, and now joining the armies and getting some food and getting you know uh, whatever you need to increase uh, to go into battle. Let's uh, let's do the the how it ends. You want to go first, Tony? How does it end for Ethrog? Oh sure. Ethrog, when they get to the uh, to the monastery, you know, and the, the battle begins, um, you see a, a group of uh, the uh, monastery bandits or whatever they are as they come out. You know, there's probably a fairly large group of them coming out to, to where he is, and uh, he looks back towards his troops, and he goes, move back. I will take care of this first. 
and he uh, steps forward and raises both hands and you see the large voluminous fireball shoot out straight where he knows that he's not in this one and it shoots out and, and destroys that whole squad of of bandit soldiers that are coming towards him. And then he turns around and he looks at the squad that's on his side and he goes, you can take the rest. And that's how the story ends for Ethrarg. Got to cast Fireball, right? It has that. <laughs> How about Vertolome, the, the now uh, not blind scout? Um, <clears throat> well, she was going to be headed back to her, uh, her home after this. So, um, so after all this is over and the job is done, you know, um, uh, she, she'll return back to uh, her home uh, in the Amazon um, where it's uh, much warmer. Um, and, uh, you know, there she will. Uh, you know, continue her work as a scout, but not blonde. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, the, you guys, uh, you know, you, the two mighty warriors joined the siege, you know, adding magics and uh, bow shots to the to the victory. Um, there, there wasn't, you know, uh, there was a handful of kind of powerful sorcerers that did some showdowns. Um, in the end, uh, you, you're victorious. Uh, some of the the uh, the original lady who, because uh, you guys don't know this, but for the anybody watching might that had thrown the fireball from the the tower, somehow she's never found. Uh, but many of her uh, loyal subjects are, and it's it's found that they were trying to establish some kind of uh, a gateway uh, in using the hot spring to to bring in some some quite evil creatures from the the depths below. Um, and you were able to thwart that. Some of the children um, and the priests, unfortunately, that were uh, in the, uh, the school were sacrificed to this end. Um, but uh, luckily not, uh, you know, the, the warlord's daughter, so he was happy for that. Um, and the two adventurers uh, tell their tale of uh, how they were captured uh, when they're finally freed from uh, a magical mirror which held their uh, souls and bodies on some level um, after they were forced to look into it by this uh, this evil sorceress who is now on the run. But uh, you've taken back the school, you've saved the girl, and uh, all is well on the frozen lands, I guess. So let's stop the recording. And...